Are you tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us, Need Software, to 323-405-1341. That's 323-405-1341. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal Buyer's Protection Guarantee www.hoodg.com okay, we got the god cash crew necks hoodies hats if you don't know where to go you get them www.hoodg.com go get you that god cast gear that brand new being gear we got Rod Digger gear, all of that. Go to www.hoodg.com. www.hoodg.com. Peace, 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 Digger, peace, God, peace, Queen, peace. We good. How you so doing? Y'all literally like killing my background. I ah. thought I was doing. I thought I was doing something. <laughs> And those are real records to top it all off. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> what you trying to say about my shower curtain, man? <laughs> hey, it's hip hop, though. It's it's still hip. It's all hip hop. That's man. right. This dog snoring you, in the background, that's hip hop, man. You good, Digga. It would be completely wrong if it was me doing that. <laughs> So you good. Don't worry about it. Listen, Queen, we ain't looking at the background. We're looking at you. You're beautiful. So. Thank you. Same to you guys. <laughs> so, yes. Um, so it's good to have you, my brother. Um, you. you know, I probably been meaning to have you for a while just on some hip hop shit. Um, but recently, you know, I just happened to be scrolling through IG and I saw a post um, that was dealing with your son. You know, now I was aware that one of your son's I had heard some years ago that, yo, he's getting ready to go to the NFL to like, like Mace got him one and, and was like, oh, that's beautiful. Like, that's great. Like, I know a lot of, um, a lot of guys that thought maybe their children were going to go to the league or whatever, but it never really happened to case, you know, but I'm like, all right, here's somebody I know that has a son that goes to the league. Great. But I didn't really hear too much about the story subsequently about him getting into the league and all of that now fast forward i'm i'm hearing yes he was in the league but now he may be suffering from cte um yes. from those of you that don't know what cte is cte is basically you know um traumatic brain injuries that result from repeated blows to the head you know, repeated trauma to the head, which occurs in a violent sport like football. Um, so, yeah, I immediately hit you up about it and was like, yo, if you want to talk about it, let's let's definitely bring awareness to this. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I understand there's some injustice going on and we we definitely face injustice here on the God uh, on the God cast. So please, let's uh, let's get into it. Well. For me, the straw that broke the camel back was um, when Antonio Brown had his outburst just recently mm. and um, how the fans and the league will de downplay, you know, when these, when these uh, players are actually saying, yo, I don't feel healthy enough mm. to play, you know, and everybody will look on the surface as if they're, you know, okay because they're not limping or anything like that, you know. And I think the term healthy is, uh, you know, a uh, code word for traumatic, you know, traumatic injuries to the head. You know, some of them, some of these players know they're not feeling well in their head to play, but it seems <coughs> like a, a forbidden thing to say or a subject to, talk, to touch amongst our fraternity. You know, they got the players so like for years, I've witnessed players not even wanting to 
subscribe to their issue because it will affect their playing time. It affects their money. It affects so much stuff, you know, politically that a lot of people don't know. You know, um, let me first by saying um, when it comes to the professional side, whatever these guys sign for, these guys don't get paid on a full contract unless they actually play their full years, you know. Mm. So that's a whole nother thing, you know. Um, and what but, percentage of the contract would you say they get out of whatever they sign for? Initially, when they sign, I think they just get the bonus. Hmm. Well, they get the bonus, and then they get a- my wife. My wife actually knows a little more detail because she she actually managed my son throughout okay. the process. Yeah. Well, they basically get their bonus. Commission. They get their bonus, and then they'll get something that is considered a minimum wage for a player. So right. regardless of whether they sign for millions, you know, however that is, um, they'll get a, a, a flat fee for that first rookie year. And then they have to play out the contract. And a lot of people don't know that, you know, whether they're signed for three million or ten million or twenty. Right, but that flat fee know. could be like four hundred thousand or something. It's about like, like four hundred and fifty thousand. Right. 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 And then on top of their, you know, signing bonus and that that's on a sliding scale, all depending on where they fall in the draft and um the organization you know there's 32 within the organization of the nfl so a lot of people don't realize that the the organizations they're separate and they have their own politics Mm. you know Mm. and it's it's under the umbrella of the nfl and so they're allowed to you know kind of do a lot of things that people don't realize you know so we got frustrated you know just in seeing antonio brown you know and odell and brandon marshall and players like that who have been speaking out for quite some time, you know, and we got frustrated because we were suffering in silence. And only reason why we know of these players because these issues took place on the field. Had it not took place on the field, it would be swept under the rug. You know, that's something we know for a fact, you know. And when we had looked for the uh, coaches to come, well, Jeff Fisher in particular, to come and see about Trey in the off season, he wouldn't come. The GM, they wouldn't come. You know, they kept too busy trying to get us to send him, you know, and he was viably sick. You know, they really need to come witness what we were dealing with. Well, I mean, granted, most families don't even have the inside connect to the coach or to the GM, I guess, because I was so involved in Trey's career and close to him, we're, we're a pretty close knit family. So Trey would express to me what he was feeling. You know, he comes home on the off season and he hits the street with all his friends and that wasn't happening. So it's also a gradual thing as well. You know, it's a gradual thing that even the families don't even realize what's happening. You know, right. they're young. Trey was 19, 20 in the league. So, you know, they're young and they're becoming young men. So at the end of the day, we, at first perceived that maybe he was just settling down, you know, that he was more so to himself. So. Now I, I asked you this Mace, when I talked to you on the phone, um, like what were some of the first signs that you may have seen that something was, something was off? I, I could say one of the things was his spending habits, mm. you know, uh, a lot of luxuries, a lot of fashion, a whole lot of things that I know that made him feel good. And um, that's um, synonymous with the symptoms. Like uh, the symptoms to concussions is similar to bipolar or schizophrenia. And then, you know, the things that help these players get through it is doing things that make them feel good. And going shopping for luxury things, or even if it's just toys, you know, that is that fulfills something for them. Mm. You know, so that was one of the things. And then the other thing were the other thing were were when we would have conversations, and the conversation would be totally out of context. He'll be we'll be talking about one thing, and he'll introduce something else. And it's not like it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't fall in context with the subject we're talking about. Didn't you tell me him about he, he bought like four cars? 
Yeah, about three, three, about three cars. Yeah, one was for his mom. Yeah, and Not then in a day, though. Not wasn't in a day though. Uh, um, there was some issues based on uh, Trey first. Well, first when he got in the league, and this just kind of piggybacks off what he was saying as far as the spending was concerned. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Trey is pretty frugal. You know, he's pretty frugal. He got in the league, and he, you know, purchased the car that he liked, but it was pretty frugal. You know. Right. I mean? kind of purchased what he was necessary he wasn't that flashy dude you know what I mean so um that started to change you know things like that started to change um we have several issues about the cars that was purchased um when this first started though um I don't know if you guys know but um in looking or you can even google it up you know we had some issues with Trey being pulled over by the Miami police um, and at this time, uh, he, he was in his off season in 2015. So, you know, I was concerned, told his father, you know, like, listen, I'm concerned about Trey. He's, he's displaying some odd behavior. So I really didn't want to leave him alone, but these, these guys are young men. So it's not like your parents can tell you what to do. I mean, yeah. we barely can tell them what to do when they're growing up, but <laughs> you know, as being adults, you know, he, he was just displaying some odd behavior. And when this incident happened, he he's always uh, obeyed what was necessary for him to, and he didn't. And that's what drew us to the car situation because they impounded the car and we come to find out that there was some paperwork that wasn't even handled with the car that Trey is usually on top of everything he does. So that's another issue that starts to be raised with these players. Like they, for some strange reason, they they start becoming infantile, and not ir and irresponsible. At one point, my son being very responsible, to then becoming very irresponsible, with stuff like completing the purchase, and the paperwork being valid for him to have the car. He gave the money, but he never really got the proper pa paperwork to complete the overall purchase which is the title and everything that was necessary. So when the car got impounded, we went to get it back. We could have gotten it back, but he had an episode at the impound place. Mm. And due to the episode, we couldn't get the car. Mom and I couldn't sign for it. We needed him to sign for it. So we couldn't get it. And they had a certain amount of days. The He was refusing to sign for it. He, yeah. was, refu right. he was completely refusing for whatever his reasons were. Right. right. And he was having this sweat, this this crazy sweat, like he was just sweating profusely. Then, mm. the next thing you know, the impound place, they had to let go the car. So, looking on the paperwork, they gave it to the next person on the paperwork that they noticed, which was the previous owner. The previous owner was the dealership. Yeah. They got the car. They never even contacted us, knowing that they sold Trey that car, knowing exactly who he was, sold him that car, and then turned around and they sold the car again to someone else. Mm. So may I, may I ask you guys, um, at what point did, was this the tipping point that made you guys say, okay, this is a serious issue. We need to discuss this with someone. Did you guys take it upon yourself to bring it to anyone uh, in the higher ups, uh, bring it to their attention, or did they or, or, or bring for anything a, to your for, attention? For a while, well, mom, she had a moment and she said some things to Coach Fisher and Les Snead, the organization, some of the players, and then um, it kind of just went nowhere. And then um like, oh, he just got some money. It's, that's what they all do. They go out and spend it and kind of then um, it off. I think well the, the hardest thing was getting him to subscribe. It's still it's hard to this day. But to this at this point, it's so acute that he displayed enough behavior where the outside world can see now. People right. can actually see. For a long yeah. time, he has been able to mask it. So if he's not subscribing it and we're saying one thing and he's like, nah, 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 my family's bugging, you know, it's right. hard to go against that, you know? And you know your child better than anyone else. You know, right. the first, you probably saw it day one. Right. 
Has there been any displays of violence? I know they say sometimes that these create violent episodes in, in uh, people. That yes. Get- yeah, it yes. has. That's it- mainly one of the first signs as well mm. is, is the aggressive behavior because the sport itself is aggressive. You know, I just want to touch on, because I know, I just want to touch on um, the day and the life of a football player you know, that people don't realize, you know, they get up at five in the morning. Yes. Yeah, take us, take us through it. Take us through like the beginning stages, the, like the, once he entered the professional realm, like just yeah. lay it all out for us. You know, well, first and foremost, these players have been playing since they've been little, you know? Right. Like, mm-hmm. And that's what me playing. and Mace were talking about. Right. Yeah. You know, they're playing since little league. Like eight you know? years old. <laughs> right. And so, you're taught at that age. To hit in the head. Like, I come right. from a culture right. where right. if you, you home get with paint the- on your helmet from another team, you right. was a sucker. Right. You Absolutely. had to. And, then th- and this was encouraged by the coaches. And we right. was little kids. I'm yeah. in fifth grade, and they're telling me to do this. Right. You're right. They want you, you know? to hurt people. Right. <laughs> it's encouraged. And now, man, you know? I'm doing that from eight years old up until 20-something years old, and then intensifying it at a professional level like yeah you i'm know, thinking it's, some pop warner kids could have cte that we don't even realize right mm-hmm. and that's what's actually happening in in these recent days where they're finding that young men as young as 26 years old have suffered from this same disease you know um it is very difficult to live with but let me just bring it back to what we were talking about with playing since little league you know you you know, I watch people in their comments and, and expressing how, oh, okay, well, they that's what they do anyway. They spend their money and then they end up broke. You know, that's all that anybody ever says. But at the end of the day, they're not realizing the life of a football player when it starts. Um, you know, there's levels to it. Then there's coaches. Like, they fight and they fight through this just to get to the league. You know, it's exciting. In fact, that's one of the most uh, – uh, the biggest goals that a football player from high school and college is looking to do, you know? And when Trey came to me at 11 in 11th grade and was like, mom, I think I see this. I see where I'm going. I see where this is headed. I was like, well, let's go then, you know? And you say, you know, what are the parents thinking? What are, all I'm thinking is to support my son. All I'm thinking is, look, he's played this long and he's achieved this level of 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 the sport let's continue you know they go to the league and they're young and they're they're jovial and they're they're ready to win not realizing this is a a corrupt uh organization you know they don't understand that a team is not interested in winning that a team has their eye on a a player from high school i mean from college and they want to draft them You know, and everybody knows how the draft goes. The draft is, it literally goes like this. If you're the lowest winning team, you get the first pick. It kind of works out that way, you know? So, you know, just dragging through Trey playing, you have coaches yelling, you have training, you have, you get up at five in the morning, you go to training, you go to class. This is in college. You go to class, then you go back and you go to practice, you know, and you're told what to do. And they sign on to these things, but because, of course, they're looking to go to the league. You know, they finally get there and they realize, wow, this is I'm a man now. You can't talk to me like that. You can't. I got lives. These men have lives. They have wives. They have children and they fight for their position every day, every day. Someone's always looking to come take their spot. Yeah. If you're hearing them on Sunday, clearly they've been training. They they take tests. They find out on Saturday whether they're on the field or they're not. And then when the player is doing extremely well and then he finds out he's not playing, that could be a mind fuck right there too. You know, why am I not playing? I did well. I've been doing well. Mm-hmm. We've been we've been winning. I've been meeting my stats. Yeah. Why are you not putting me in now? And, you know, it's not just about playing time. It's about all of that anxiety, all that aggression, you know, Come on, we, you, you, men, it's very difficult. You know, you talk about bruising and the ego. They almost have none. 
because it's just being bruised over and over and over. And then you're in front of millions of people that are like, hey, why haven't you played? What's going on? My fantasy football points are going down. You know, they become like this commodity instead of humans. Now add add the concussion part, the unnatural contact. And here it is, you know, we talking about my son, Antonio Brown, Odell, Odell Beckham. We talking about elite players, but what about the linemen? The linemen that don't get no shine, and they hit helmet to helmet just to protect the quarterback or the, the running, running back. back. Right, almost every play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we forgetting about even the young men that don't even have that shine that's making them hits head to head every play. And a lot of those guys are the four hundred thousand dollar guys that we're talking right. about. Absolutely, yeah. minimum wage. Minimum yeah. wage. Mm-hmm. Now, to my understanding, I'm sorry, you was about to say something. No, no, no. Go ahead. To to my understanding, now they say they say uh, CTE is something that genuinely can't uh, generally can't be diagnosed until uh, a player passes away. Right. Um. Do you think that's a ruse? Because I, I just feel like if this is happening, you know, if this is happening to the players physically, like it isn't a mental thing. It's well, it is a mental thing, but it's also physical. Like, don't you think they should be able to see at least the onset of it with MRIs and CAT scans the, the same way they're looking at these concussions? Well, I mean, there's a definitely enough money amongst that organization to invest in research for sure. as much as they rest invest in research for everything else i mean we're right. in the middle of a pandemic and they trying to spend millions and billions of dollars on research for a vaccine why can't this be done for a sport that's over what Hundred years old, maybe. You, you have people going to space on the weekends. This is right. America's like the, sport. Right. This right. Is so-called America's sport. Exactly. They do research just to see how to make a motherfucker jump five more inches. Right. You understand what I'm saying? That's the type of research they'd rather put money into, into mm-hmm. a shoe that flexes in a way that gives you just a little more spring to fucking, you know, run that touchdown or whatever the case may be. But this shit like this, they won't they won't have money for. Um, well, it's, so- it, it's frustrating to me because you'll know when a player... Uh, tears a hamstring or needs a, a ACL reconstruction, right. but you'll never know a player has concussions and we're treating that. Mm. And you'll never know when, when it doesn't go well. You know, um, I, I feel like early detection is the best, right? So if mm-hmm. you can't tell whether they have CTE, you can tell the behavior though. It's the same behavior. You know, they made a movie about it. It's the same exact behavior that they display over and over and over. And, you know, in talking to Trey a lot of times, and we talk daily, you know, they got players in the, in the locker room going, Hey, just give me one more, just give me one more quarter. And these men are unhealthy. They're sick. They, they could barely, you know, move. So they're, you know, shooting them up with medication. So they don't feel it until the end of the game. You know, people who get hit and they fall, you know, you don't realize as a fan that they're told to, if you can get up and get to the side of the sidelines, you need to do that because we need to run and play. So you never really realize how hurt the player really is, you know, so it's it's just deeper. And we're just urging people to dig a little deeper before you have these assumptions. Start that passing these judgment are, and, right. you know, throwing out your ridicule you know, to these players because they're really going through some stuff, you know. I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if they are detecting it and, you know, it, it and it comes out years later that, oh, we could see it all along, but, you know, we have to protect our franchise 